Hi, let me tell you a story about a good idea at the wrong time and how I tried to patent it. Oh. The story starts in early 2007. I was at the gym doing my workout as I do. I'm a bit of a gym junkie and I actually have um, qualifications in the field. I'm actually a qualified fitness instructor, although I've never really taught any classes or done any personal tration. I am actually qualified. Anyway, I was at the gym and Back in the day, back in 2007, what's that, uh, 11 years ago now, um, you know, everyone had these newfangled iPod-y things. They'd been around for a while, but like everyone had an iPod. Hardly anyone was using their phone to listen to music, right? It was very popular. And I thought, you know, like and sometimes I have my notebook for my workout and stuff like that. Usually I do classes. But anyway, I was doing my own workout and I sort of, you know, occasionally like had a notebook of, you know, like exercises and stuff. I was going to do how many sets, how many reps of what exercise and stuff like that. So I got to thinking, everyone's got these iPod things. What if I actually had the instructions in my ear? That sounds like a good idea, right? But, you know, how can I do that, right? Yeah, I could use like a voice recorder and actually record it and stuff like that. But I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool? Like everyone's like listening to music while they're working out. What if they could actually get instructions at the same time? Aha, the light bulb went off. So that's when I came up with the idea for this. <laughs> which is still there, dates from, you can see the date at the bottom, to February 14th, 2007. Pod sweat, I called it, um, because like iPod and sweating <laughs> sounded like a good name. Anyway, I came up with I, what I thought was a really novel idea, and I think it, I, well, in was and hence the point of this video it was a really good idea at the time it was just really bad timing so let me go into it i uh wrote this in wrote the program on in short order in uh, visual basic don't know i think it was vb6 was it at the time and basically what it did is it uh was a program you would here it is how it works um is that it yeah that's a screenshot from the program here we go so we have this program here which uh, no longer works it needs you know some old like old dll's and stuff like that couldn't be dicking around with it trying to get it working on a modern windows uh 10 machine anyway <laughs> can probably download it somewhere anyway it basically this was the main screen and it would uh like allow you to put in like your weights and your reps and do like in frequency and and it would auto increment uh your weights and your reps like every second or third day or so or a second or third workout or something like that and uh but the anyway it was it was like a windows program that allowed you to do this but the uh the magic in this is that uh my program would actually modify the tags inside mp3 files because if you're not aware mp3 files actually um have like a like a tag at the beginning that has all this meta information you know the song title you know how it can pop up on your ipod or your iphone or whatever you're using these days your car radio or whatever it pops up with the song and all that sort of stuff all that information is embedded in tags in the mp3 file and i won't go deep into details i can put links in if you want to go check it out anyway what it did is actually embedded the exercise information into those mp3 tags so on your ipod when you actually uh, loaded it up it would show you the uh, the exercises that you had to do how many reps how many and all that sort of stuff but not only that the program actually uh embedded a voice at the start of uh, each mp3 so you didn't even have to look at the screen so if you had like one of those small ipods that didn't really have the screen or was inconvenient it was in your pocket you didn't want to look at it it would actually tell you in your ear before your favorite song uh, came on what your exercises you had to do and then you do your exercises to your favorite song then the next song would come on you do that and give you that announcement and the way it did this is <laughs> one of the you could actually choose the voice one of them was uh microsoft sam if hands up if you remember microsoft sam anyway that really wasn't good enough but of course, Microsoft Sam computer generated voices are really shitty, right? So <laughs> here's the actual, um, all the source code and stuff like that. I use the uh, lame uh, encoder 
and you know because that was that was the encoder back then to generate uh like i think i i can't remember how i joined the mp3 files together anyway i you know i put a lot of work into this uh program and learning about the intricacies of mp3 files and tags and how to join mp3 files to you know uh con concatenate um audio and stuff like that anyway i wanted a human voice and of course my voice is crap right so it's a wonder I do a radio show and make a living from this. So what I did is I actually got Mrs. E V blog to record, here we go, 44 kilohertz, 16 bit mono. All of these different wave files, oh, there must have been more than it. exercise names, yeah. All these exercise names. So all these different exercises, I got her to actually record these. So if we go in here, here we go, I'll play that again. Alternate dumbbell curls. So Bent knee, flat bench, leg raises. <laughs> Arm blaster curls. And <laughs> so, and then I got her to record all these numbers, like, you know, from 1 to 10 and then multiples. So 30. So 30 and then say, you know, 2000. 2000. So if you wanted the number, you know, 2031, then the software would uh, convert that number into, it'd know that it needs two th the word 2000, you know, and 30 and 1. And it'd join all those audio clips together and then it would uh, encode those into an MP3 file and then it would concatenate the MP3 three files along with the exercise name and everything else. So I, we actually had a, uh, you know, a human voice at the start of every track. And anyway, I thought that was a really cool idea. I thought like, I, I looked around like this had never been done before, right? So I thought it'd take the world by storm, you know, like how many people are exercising and want a, a thing on that worked with not only iPods but worked with any MP3 player. It didn't matter what it was, iPod, one of the, you know, the I, I had a Creative Zen or whatever it was, tiny little single double A, triple A thing or whatever, or it could be, could have been your phone at the time, for example. But unfortunately, this was February 14th, 2007. So I thought this was a fantastic idea. I told my brother-in-law, Phil, about it, who uh, you might have seen on the blog before. You might know he's a patent attorney. And at the time, he was like, he had just started uh, being a patent attorney and, you know, wanted the experience and stuff like that. So he said, we can patent this. We can, let me, let me patent, let me write up the patent for this. Okay, so <laughs> that's what he did. He wrote up the patent. It's like huge. Right, well, no, the pattern's not big. This is like all the email correspondence, you know, and all the other stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, I actually filed a provisional pattern for this. And, of course, he did it for free, so it didn't cost me anything to have the pattern drafted, which would normally be many thousands of dollars, could even, you know, three, two, three thousand dollars, depending on how much time that they spend. Could be a lot more than that. Um, actually, not only doing the investigation to see if it's a viable patent idea, which Phil did the searches, and he assured me, yeah, this is like, yeah, this would probably get granted, you know, and you could own the market for embedding, uh, for putting exercise information in MP3 files. And I thought, that's a killer. So, you know, even though I'm not a big fan of patents, I do actually technically have one from a former company that I have for underwater um, acoustic type stuff. I'm a co names co on the patent, you know, co-patent holder. On that, I got paid my $1.00 from the company at the time they had to pay me one dollar so the you know sign the rights over to the company and stuff like that uh i remember i went out and bought half a muffin muffins were two dollars at the at the company canteen and for my one i put in chipped in an extra dollar and i had my the half a muffin tasted great anyway so i thought this was a great idea i'd get a patent and he did it for free and i think it cost me 80 yeah i've got the receipt in here i think it cost 80 bucks to get the uh, provisional patent application and what you do in that instance for a provisional patent application it means like you just put it in early and from that date, it was at the time, I believe, don't know if it's changed now, and this is for Australia, it might be different in other countries, but from that date, when you file the provisional patent application, you don't have to pay as much to actually uh, put that in, but then from that date, you have a year to decide whether or not you want to apply for a full 
patent. And at the time, you know, a full patent's like five, six thousand dollars at the time. It's probably more now, and that didn't cover all the countries I wandered in. So it was a lot of money. So I thought, oh, look, let's just put in a provisional patent. 80 bucks, it's nothing, right? Might as well put it in, and then I'll see if the program becomes popular and whether or not, you know, I want to spend the full money on the full patent. So, yeah, we got our provisional patent back in um, March 2007. Beauty. So I thought, hey, you know, if there's a chance this patent's going to get granted, it's kind of cool, it's novel, I think it has really wide uh, appeal. Who knows, it might be, uh, you know, the idea might be worth something um, down the track. So I actually released my uh, program, I got some beta testers and, and stuff like that, you can download it on my website, it was all free, so I was just going to give it away, and you know, maybe I'd have like a paid uh, version down the track, and uh, stuff like that. I think I might have even, yeah, I was working on like a pro version, like a paid uh, version which had extra stuff or something like that. Anyway, so it was all looking pretty cool until ta -da, June 29th, 2007. There it is. The date in that will live in infamy when the iPhone was released. And of course, the big thing about the iPhone uh, was that not that it was a good phone or whatever, like who cares, right? So it was just another phone, but it had apps. Well, I'm not sure that like the apps really I don't think they had the apps at the time but they were or they only had the Apple apps like you couldn't actually design your own apps and stuff like that that might have come a year later I don't know I had don't don't have the info don't quote me on that but I don't think that the apps were available straight away you know like everyone's writing an app these days right and back then right you got to remember this is 2007 apps basically weren't around as we know them today you know they don't have your million different apps that do absolutely everything so that's why it was a windows program it was bedded in the mp3s there was really no way to run an app i just you know wasn't a thing back then the technology didn't really uh exist and it didn't really exist for another couple of years before apps would really take on not only on the iphones but also you know but then android would come up and other phones and stuff would have apps and things like that so anyway um it, it came to the 12 month point in like um you know march 2008 and Phil's hassling me, Dave, do you want to pay the five or six grand or whatever and get the full patent application for this thing? So, yeah, you know, the program, like people were using it and stuff like that, but it really wasn't uh, catching on all that much. And then these, I, I realized, I sensed that these apps were going to be a huge thing, right? Not only on iPhones, but on every phone. Like, you know, smartphones had started and that was, you know, the, the, what made a smartphone really were the apps that you could download for it. And I could see that, you know, people aren't going to be carrying two devices, these modern smartphones. Uh, as I, Were they even called smartphones back then? I don't know. Anyway, I thought, you know, like, no, nah, people are probably going to be, they don't want to carry two devices. They don't want an iPod and an iPhone or, a, you know, some other phone. They're just going to listen to the music on their phone. And if they've got the phone, they've probably got... Well, they have the ability to download apps, and I saw that, you know, apps would, would totally dominate this thing, and really, yeah, my idea, as novel as it was that I thought, um, yeah, didn't really have a future in the app side of things so it still could have been used in an app in terms of uh, embedding exercise music in an mp3 file and I don't know maybe I could have made a fortune from it but <laughs> I don't know at the time I decided that uh, yeah it really wasn't worth the five six thousand dollars at least um, I couldn't see my return on investment on that thing and I decided nah, I'll let it lapse so anyway, there you go. I could have owned the patent on uh, putting exercise information inside an MP3 file, but whether or not that would have been used in apps down, I don't know. If you, I don't use exercise apps, so if you do use exercise apps, let me know. See if anyone's using my technology that I invented in 2007. Are they embedding voices 
into and mixing them with the mp3 files because i'd have to read the whole pattern the exact wording of the pattern again and see exactly what i was uh claiming so you know it's it's very specific wording it's it, it's not that hard to get around patterns if you know what you're doing especially if you're a big company and things like that but and so you've got to be you know very like it goes on and on there's like like i don't know 24 claims like no there's more there's like 30 claims or or other things i don't know i don't know whether or not it would have been uh granted you don't know until you go through and you spend a couple of years and wait um and things like that and here's the uh and here's some jazzy diagrams to <laughs> typical pattern stuff you know the flow chart of how it works and things I love it. Look look at all that. Like that's that's just pure wankery, you know. <laughs> and anyway, that's what uh patent attorneys do. They just, you know, turn your good idea into gibberish and useless, you know, incomprehensible diagrams and stuff like that. But yeah, basically um whether or not it would have been like worth anything, I think it probably would have been easy to uh avoid it um in terms of like an app avoiding it in terms of uh it just like if just speaks it speaks it directly it interrupts your audio stream and just boom you know you're not joining them you're not doing it saving as an mp3 and and you know doing stuff like that so it, it probably would have been easy for any app to overcome this pattern but you just never know and then of course if uh, some company did actually uh, like technically I what I thought would have been violating my uh, patent even if it was granted what am I going to do about it like I'm a one-man band a typical to win a patent case cost several million dollars minimum like it's not like you can do it for you can go to your local lawyer and said hey I'm going to sue him for patent infringement and it's going to cost you 10 grand 50 grand 100 grand 200 grand half a million <laughs> nah that'll just buy you lunch with the partners no forget it um it's going to cost you a couple of million bucks to win of course you can try and and then it becomes the whole pattern thing if you can you know try and uh tell them hey look i've i've got this i'm threatening to sue you you know you can send them a cease and desist letter or whatever you're violating my patent they just might go screw you you know especially if it's a big company <laughs> sue us and what do you yeah you just have to walk away with your tails between your legs so the idea of the patent actually being worth anything would have been from the point of view of a company going oh this is rock solid you know this is like we can't get around this this guy owns this technology and you'd have to you know hope that uh, some biggie buys out your patent or licenses or whatever and i i really didn't see <laughs> see that happening so yeah just didn't seem worth it so yeah could have been rich <laughs> most likely not <laughs> anyway if you've got an interesting uh, similar story about a pattern something you tried a pattern and it was just or maybe an idea for the uh you know a good idea at the wrong time let us know in the comments so anyway hope you enjoyed that little story <laughs> let me know your comments down below catch you next time